Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com here. I have a Heathkit SP220. Busy, busy here. I haven't been making videos, so I figured I'd make a video on this one. Needs a lot of work. So, customer sent this in. He needs a new multimeter. Uh, some of the diodes failed on this old Harbach metering board. So he, he had provided another one. So I'm going to put the newer style in, because it's the newer style. Larger diodes for the bias circuit. So uh, he had the RL measures resistors in. A couple of them failed. Actually multiple resistors failed. So I'm going to take all that out. I'm going to put a new plate blocker in. Needs a new plate tune cap as you can see. Shot. Uh, one of the contacts on the rotary switch is damaged. So I'm going to replace the rotary switch. It's missing the feed through insulator. I'm going to replace that. I disconnected the B positive. I wanted to turn it on and make sure the 90 volt winding was okay on the filament transformer, which it is. So I didn't want to fire it up with the old filter caps. I'm changing the filter caps, changing the fan to the Harbach fan. Uh, I'll show the bottom. Transformer's tilted. It happens a lot. You know, it's shipped. The floor bends. Yeah. It over. Grids are not grounded. Once again, I'm going to take that. Or I'll measure stuff out. So I put a, um, the circuit breakers are broken. This one's missing the push button thing and this one does nothing. It just, this one's actually like, <laughs> you know, it has continuity across it, but this one doesn't. So I put a fuse in series temporarily. I didn't want to hot wire it just in case, you know, so the fuse would pop if there was an issue with the filament transformer. I'll do the bias mod, change electrolytic. Uh, just get everything done. Uh, he has the. Uh, just this thing needs a lot of work. So I'll go through it and uh, I'll take a video after. Check the SO239 connectors. Looks like someone electrical taped this up. I'll fix all that. A lot of work here. So I'll get to work and then I'll make a video showing its completion. I'll be back. And I'm going to do another quick video here. So I took the air variables out, coils out. Got to get to the nuts on this side. Here's the old rotary switch. See the bad 40 meter contact right there on one side. Actually, I have another bad contact on this side too. <laughs> you notice that. That one's actually damaged also. So. Here's the new one. Let me put this in. It's nice and slow, man. This is, uh. I've never had to change one on one of these. I've worked on so many. But, um. Okay. I've changed them on, uh, the Maritron AL82, AL1500, AL1200, and some other amps, but I've been lucky with these. Okay, back to work. Hey, everybody. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Please like the video. only takes a second at the end of the video. So, this is the completed Heathkit SB220. So, went ahead and removed the old damaged plate tune capacitor. As you can see, the plates are destroyed. Replaced the high voltage meter. Place the output rotary switch, you know, as, as known as the band switch. You can see multiple bad contacts. Got rid of that parasitic stuff, parasitic suppressor stuff from RL measures. The old metering board had some bad diodes on it, so went ahead. He, he had supplied this board, so I put it together and installed it. New high voltage wire going over to the filter caps. Harbach filter cap board, zip tied everything nice, nice. Series glitch resistor. This was missing. Actually, it was like cracked, and the other half was missing. So I ended up replacing it. The feed through porcelain piece. New meter lamps. Clean the input rotary switch. There's the new plate tune cap. New plate blocking capacitor. There's the new rotary switch down in there. Take a nice look at it. It's hard to see, but everything's all soldered nice, nice. New strap. New parasitic suppressors that I wound with new uh, two watt carbon comp resistors. New Harbach fan kit, which I installed. 
Grounded the grids the good way. Drilled a hole for each connection. 632 screws with a kep nut. Don't go to the strap. I mean, I'm sorry, don't go to the screws. It's better to go directly to the chassis. Get a better path right to the chassis. Less inductance right to the chassis than trying to go through that screw, which can loosen up. Did the self-bias modification. Change electrolytic cap. Did the soft start. Did the soft key. Replace the circuit breakers. The old fan had the, the wires you know, twisted together in electrical tape. Now it's soldered in a heat trunk, all zip tied. Uh, new SO239 Teflon type. The old one was damaged. I grounded this side of the coax, just had a steel clamp. Now I have a little tab there, it's all soldered, nice, nice, soldered, uh, grounded both sides. Redid a ton of solder connections. Solder connections here at the filament choke, uh, at the terminal strip. For the line strapping, you know, to go from 120 to 240, vice versa. So, this thing was a lot of work. Took a lot of time. Uh, bent the chassis back a little bit at some point during shipping. He's shipped this a lot of times. It's been fixed a bunch of times. The transformer pushed down, so I bent it back a little bit. There was all sorts of missing hardware that I replaced. Uh, there's a piece of solder just sitting there. I'll get that out of there after. Um... Yeah, tighten everything. There was, you know, like I said, replaced missing hardware. Bent back the other side, the cover on the other side where the transformer had dented it. So this thing is good to go. A lot of work. <laughs> People don't understand how much work it takes. It's just so much work, you know, to just to ch change the band switch. I mean, everything has to come apart to get at everything. You have to put these hardbox kits together. Customer provided the tubes. I use Penta Labs when I tell people to buy tubes, but he already had a set of tubes, I guess, and he, he had me use those, so. All set. Next amplifier is a LK500. I might make a video. I might not. I haven't been making a video of every amplifier I do. just don't have the time, but this thing needed so much work, I figured I'd make a video. Okay. Take care. Catch y'all later. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119.